All right, all right. Welcome back, everybody. I am Brian Altunian here with my co-host, Sean Francis. We're just two dads <laughs> uh, with our weekly Just Two Dads podcast. I don't know why I thought that was funny today. Seemed funny. Um, great to uh, great to be here with all of you. Uh, we are excited to be kicking off uh, this new year with some some you know some great great things we have in store for everybody. For those of you watching us live on on Facebook or or hearing us on uh, on radio or catching us on podcasts, welcome. Thank you for being part of our extended village, our extended family, and, and uh, we talk about things that are important to our families. This is a conversation that Sean and I started a few years ago as dads of children who are dealing with special needs issues and our brotherhood and our, our you know, this, this relationship that we have forged has turned into an ongoing conversation that we decided to share with the rest of the world <laughs> and all the good and the bad that comes with all of that and the vulnerability and the, uh, the hope that, uh, you know, that the good and the bad I say, but, but Sean, really, right. We, we have learned through all of this, that, that, the, and you say it all the time. And I have, I have taken it on that there are, we have more similarities than we have differences in the world. And our hope is that we get to share those, those elements that we find common ground with and, um, and, uh, hopefully provide some hope and some solace for folks who are going through issues. And it has now extended beyond even the special needs community. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to be part of this conversation. I'm pleased that we're able to do this. And for those who, who participate with us as viewers and listeners, uh, thank you for being part of that conversation as well. So hope that you share this with the people that, you know, have an impact in your community and, um, we have a, a YouTube page, and so subscribe to our YouTube YouTube page, and like us, and <laughs> share your, share it with people, and uh, let's spread the word and get as many folks. And if there are subject matters that you'd like us to cover, please let us know that too. Comment. Let us know if there are things that we can um, that we can uh, talk about. We have some great guests who are scheduled over the next several weeks. We're we're really excited about having them on. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be sharing more information about them later. And also, we're going to talk about an event that Sean and I are doing, uh, separate and apart from our Just Your Dad's podcast, but really the, the impetus that kicked this whole thing off. And so we're excited to be talking about that. So as we kick Most the show definitely. off today, Mr. Francis, hi. how are you doing today, buddy? I am uh, blessed, thankful, and uh, a bunch of things. I'm thankful and grateful for you, for what we are building here. And in terms of our uh, outreach and the growth of uh, the community and our village, uh, added to it recently is uh, WSDX uh, AM on uh, St. Croix, United States Virgin Islands. Um, and um, that, that, that means a lot to me because uh, my family is there. I'm from St. Thomas and I have family on both St. Thomas and St. Croix. My mom is from St. Uh, Croix, my dad's from St. Thomas. And um, a matter of fact, it was my uh, aunt's birthday yesterday so uh, you know that was um, I'm, I'm sure very interesting as far as COVID Happy goes birthday. and anything yes yes um my aunt, yeah. uh, aunt uh Corinne yeah. Kasia. uh yes but um our show today you know we're we're you know we've got the the holidays behind us and the new year amongst us and what most people do come the first of the year is talk about planning goals and things like that uh gyms and um, health clubs and things like that are at their all time high. Now, I don't know if it's between January and, you know, where between January and March, or if it's right at, you know, February, but because um, the human condition is such that most people would like to have change, but most people don't want to change, uh, you know, by sometime shortly after the gym is packed in the beginning of the year, it's all, you know, empty. Now they're all empty anyway, but uh, I digress. Our point today is that we're talking about <laughs> goal setting and how that relates to um, having the special needs component attached to it. The, the, the stuff that we talk about are things that really affect everyone. Like we've said before, you know, I don't even know if there is such a thing as special needs. The needs aren't special. Like you said, we have more in common than we do uh, otherwise. The needs aren't necessarily special. What might be different when someone has a, a catastrophic injury, a, diag a diagnosis, of some kind of um, a delay um, or uh, issue with cognition or something of that sort, or as in the case with uh, my son Elijah, you know, being diagnosed with autism at the age of three, 
the only thing that takes place is that those needs, you may have more of the needs, but the, the, the quantity is more special than the needs themselves. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. Goal setting, generally speaking, as it pertains to uh, one's life and the year and, you know, getting ready for things. Um, because depending on the severity of the loved one that has a diagnosis or injury uh, that has special needs, you may have goals all out of the window and just forgotten about them. Uh, and, you know, we often talk about the fact that most people have dreams uh, that they've forgotten about. I talked, I made the mention of the uh, uh, the poem by the great Langston Hughes, A Dream Deferred. Well, many dreams get deferred as a result of, you know, when, you know, caring for someone that may have special needs, but simple goals get deferred as well, but they shouldn't be. We should be making an attempt to, uh, to chase our dreams no matter what our situation is. So today we're gonna talk about what those things mean, generally speaking, we're gonna talk about what people think of when they think of goals and special needs, which may mean goals for your child, milestones, uh, things of that sort. We'll talk about those things, but then we're gonna talk about also the type of things that people may forget, which is just the general goals and dreams and, and visions that somebody may have to build a life that they want. And so um, it's almost like you're the guest today, at least starting out that way, because <laughs> I'm gonna ask you, because I'm curious, because Elijah's diagnosis at the age of three, the world in which we lived, um, just under, what, I don't know, like, uh, 10 years ago, um, is a lot different from the world that we lived in when your daughter Jordan was three. So um, in terms of what was available, resources and things of that sort. So you graduated from Pepperdine, got your MBA, worked in business, started companies, have taken companies public, been a CEO, all these different things. And those things come along with inherent goals in terms of projections and earnings and you know what you're gonna do. You were in that situation um, after having left the corporate world at the time that Jordan's diagnosis came about. So tell us a little bit about what that was like for you, generally speaking. And then did you even focus on goals for the year and things like that as, 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 as the year came about? Or were you and your, your wife so consumed with uh, Jordan's old, uh, own goals at that point in time? Tell us a little bit about what that was like, as well as her goals and, and, uh, and uh, milestones. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's a, a, this is an interesting topic. And, and you know, for those that we do the show, and it's about an hour long. And yet uh, every, all, about 55 minutes in, we're like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe the hour is almost over. So um, initially, I think in the beginning of these hours, I'm like, oh, man, I don't know how we're going to fill an hour. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, my God, the hour is up already. I mm -hmm. think that this is a topic that while it sounds like it could be, you know, people, go, ah, you know, talks about goal setting. I, I, I do think. The, it, what your question leads to so many different uh, openings, I think, for the conversation. So let me just say this. Um, a couple things. First of all, Jordan's now 25 and Elijah's now 14, right? 14. Mm -hmm. yep. So there's a difference, right? There's an 11 year, 11 year difference from their start of their diagnosis. So that just to give some context. But I'll, I'll say this a few things. One, I used to, I noticed that in my, in my life growing up, um, I would always get sick in December. Now, first of all, my, my birthday is in early December. And I had this whole story when I was growing up that, you know, December birthdays always get ripped off when it comes to, that's what the kid thinks about holidays in terms of the presents they're going to get. Right. right. Uh, but, you know, and I, and I know that people don't think that that's, you know, ridiculous, but for us December babies, we know, right. People go, Oh, you know, we're just going to celebrate your birthday when the family's here for thing for Christmas. And then, you know, everything becomes wrapped up in one gift. You're like, oh, really? I feel like I got, didn't really get the full celebration. So I don't know if that was the issue. But I, I do know that I used to get sick every December. Uh, and mm -hmm. it was only until I got, you know, a, a little bit older, a little bit more mature to understand that the, you know, in a way that was my body so, sort of telling me to, you know, kind of shut down at the end of the year. Not shut down, but, you know, wind down, cleanse, get, you know, get get out. I, I, I have had back issues in my life and on three different occasions at the end of the year, completely threw my back out in debilitating pain, you know? Wow. And so I think that that's how it's all tied together, right? At the end of the year. And it made me start to think about planning for the year and, and actually taking time at the end of the year, every December and really like, like, like breaking from my normal routine to think about the year that had passed and even having like go through, even if I had to open up my calendar and go, okay, so 
let's go back and walk through the year. What happened in January? What happened in February? I know that this year that just passed, a lot of people lost a sense of timing altogether, right? Some cases. Um, others people had, you know, other cases people had wild, phenomenal success and, you know, could can mark those successes by the dates. But I would spend time going back into what occurred in the last year and then what do I want to have occur in the year to come um, in more in generality. So that was sort of my, you know, early on when I was in my you know, early 20s, I said that's sort of my early planning. Um, when I got married, it, my wife and I met in college, went to UCLA together. We met in college. Um, I went on and got my MBA. She went to law school. So, you know, the idea, we knew that we were going to have a family, but like the when of having a family was never, you know, wasn't, we didn't wasn't really have open conversations about it. We just, we knew it was, it was coming and, and we thought, well, maybe when, and I think this happens a lot with people when it comes to planning their, their, their day and their goal, their year, whatever you start thinking, well, let's have a, maybe we'll start have, start, start working on our family now, right now. And we never really did that. And crazy enough, Sean, we <laughs> we saw a like a TV movie, and there was this relationship conversation. And I remember that the, the the man in the relationship said to the, to the woman, you know, it's never going to be the right time. Like, what are we waiting for to start right. our lives together? Right? It's never going to be the right time. And I remember looking at my wife, going, you know, it's true. Like, whenever you have a child, it's never the right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't often don't plan on it, right? And yeah, even if you plan yeah. on it, you can't really properly be prepared to have a child, right? And then, you know, so for us, it was like, okay, well, we don't really plan on it. And, you know, some days today, we talk about this all the time, some days today, when when some, there's, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on the calendar, but not any day and not some day and not one day, that's not on the calendar. Yeah, right. And so we really kind of spent a lot of time sort of planning out our lives and, you know, to some degree, like, OK, let's, you know, let's let's do this. And, you know, by maybe by the end of this particular year, we'll we'll, we'll buy a house. And by this. so we were starting to do some informal planning. Um, I started a business, uh, you know, when when actually I, I was working in, in in corporate America when my wife got pregnant. And as what happens in corporate America and, and with an MBA, you know, I was in charge of the finance department. And my job is always to do shutdown scenarios and lay people off. And sure enough, the year that Jordan was born, I was saddled with uh, shutting down a division of a major entertainment corporation. And I was the last man standing. And that mm. caused, and by the way, my wife and I had just bought a house when I started that job. Um, and so, again, who plans on that? Who plans on corporate shutdowns and, you know, those type of things? If you're if you're the victim of that, you, there's no way that you can prepare for that kind of thing. Right. So, right. you know, I we had a lot of stress in our life when she was pregnant with Jordan, and uh, not mm. and maybe that was a contributing factor. Who knows, right? Nobody knows if there's yeah. an issue during during pregnancy that causes things that lead to to um, you know leads to special needs issues, learning disabilities, or you know any any kind of uh again we looked at a whole bunch of factors right she right physical you know every time we have a child with special needs right we try to find is there a reason for it right what caused this why me god why did you choose me right why did why are all these things in place so i can go back to the time prior during pregnancy and prior to her birth that you know i could have said well maybe if 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 if, if stress causes issues during pregnancy that then have an impact on on child and child development you know there, there could have been a whole bunch of factors that were involved right um when i left that job jordan was born my job ended at the jordan was born in november my job ended at the end of that year um i was an became an entrepreneur and started a you know started my own consulting practice and started my own my own business and so i didn't really know how to plan and goal set for that business. I had to like make it all up as I was going along. Mm. And then when Jordan was diagnosed, I think what it did for us is it caused us to try to put some structure in place where it wasn't right. structure, right? We had the house, we had bought a house, we're now living in the house, now having a child, now having a child with special needs. And we got very, very focused on structure. Um, uh, that was a big thing for us, right? We really had to figure out how to balance that because the special needs component. So, so obviously, those who have children, and I can, you know, we are having this conversation. Those who have children, it's difficult to 
to plan. In fact, in fact, they tell you be unstructured, right? You have to be flexible when you have a child. Right. You have to find your child up with, with uh, you know, you know, some sort of you know illness in the middle of the night, or you know, all the struggles that you have with childhood <laughs> childhood illnesses. You have to be flexible. And that came at a time that I felt like I had to have some structure in place because I was an entrepreneur and trying to figure this whole thing out. And so, um, it's a very, very, very long answer to your to your question. I apologize for that, but I, it, it goes back to the how do you how do you goal you know set goals for the year when there's so much unknown, and I think that it was a struggle for us to be honest. We really struggled with that for a long time. And as Jordan got older, um, goal setting, even though I could do it personally and I could do it for my companies and I had objective measuring tools to evaluate how we did against our goals. Right. 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 As a family and as a family with a special needs child, that was a difficult, that was difficult to do. It was very difficult Mm -hmm. to do. I don't know if you, I mean, again, very long answer to your question, but but for you, like, how do you guys plan? You have a completely different family dynamic. Jordan was my only child at the time. And so yeah, much easier. Yeah. Her, da- her, her sister, my second daughter, was born afterwards. But that was, that was, that's different. But you had a family already with children when yeah. you guys well, were you, diagnosed. So well, how did read, you guys you read, handle it? You read my mind because I was thinking of that. And I was thinking, already thinking, home piece of money out there hears this and can relate to it. And first of all, just full disclosure, um, I, I had never been diagnosed with anything myself. Um, but when I was in school, uh, I was always physically in school. I had great attendance. I was hardly late. I hardly missed any days. I didn't get sick that often, but I was always spiritually and mentally absent. I mean, not in the classroom, <laughs> you know? So they tried to find all kind of diagnosis because in the conversation, I, you know, I did fine, did well and everything. And I'm saying that to say that the ability to just focus and lock in on something, I've gotten so much better at that later on in life. But, but the fact of the matter is I still respond to that better with necessity than I do um, virtually anything else. And so when you throw the special needs component into it and, you know, and all of those things just, you know, can be so scattered. And so for those that don't know, uh, my wife and I uh, started dating and she had her two daughters from her previous marriage. Um, and then we had Elijah. And then when he was, gosh, I think he was diagnosed with autism at three. My wife noticed some things that weren't quite right as far as development goes. I, in addition to being a first time dad, and I don't, I don't know, maybe being a guy, I just thought that everything he did was cute. I didn't think that was like, I don't know what the delay is. I just didn't see any of it. Uh, but but she did. And so we got early intervention. He was diagnosed at three. And then what took place after, as far as our family dynamic matters as well, too, because we ended up uh, taking in and becoming legal guardians to my sister-in-law's uh, four children, two boys and two girls. And um, we, about two, two and a half years ago, completed the adoption process with them. Um, so that played a role in... Uh, the division of my time, what's needed, and how you, you know, you, um, how you're there for each of the children because they, they, they need different things. And so, to be honest, you know, what it really did is it was a really a, a real challenge. And this is one of the reasons why at the end of the show, um, I give all thanks and recognition uh, to my wife because she is, uh, she's focused. She, when something needs to get done. She's on it, you know. I can get thrown off just because sometimes it's just the way my, you know, my mind, uh, you know, generally operates. So it's been a, you know, a, a big challenge. But of late, especially, it's become a gift too, um, or it's an opportunity to become a gift. So uh, anyone that listens to us or watches us on a regular basis has heard me say, uh, talk about the um, uh, challenges of sleep depri- uh, deprivation as a result of autism, because boys tend to produce less melatonin than girls, generally speaking. And when you add the autism um, uh, component, then you know the, the melatonin that is produced can be very uh, low. And so we've tried things like uh, melatonin gummies, which work for a period of time. Um, you know, we've, and, and I say this with full disclosure saying that if, if what I'm 
I acknowledge that if what I'm explaining is our biggest challenge and our biggest nightmare, then you know, life is good because there are people that are dealing with bigger things. But I think depending on what each of our situations are, this is where goal setting is important. So um, Elijah, you know, maybe two summers ago, it was the first summer that he didn't go to summer school. And that threw us completely in a tailspin because he didn't have anything to quote unquote get up for. So he was keeping these, when I say long hours, I mean like like rock star hours. Like there were some cases he went to bed and fell asleep at 7 a.m. Sometimes he'd go a full 24 hours without falling asleep. And he's not bouncing off the walls, but just not asleep. And you know, that affects you. You just don't sleep quite as soundly. Because the other thing that comes with autism, which he hasn't experienced in a while, is um uh elopement, which is just to, you know, simply just walk out the door. Okay. Um, uh, and so it's been a long time since that's happened, um, years. But, you know, you just don't rest completely well with it. So anyway, with this school year, it kind of came about again. And then when we hit uh, winter break, it was all out the same thing, just not happening. And for the past week, you know, he's been going to bed at about no earlier than like 5 a.m. And I, getting ready for the, for the new year, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'll show you my, my life plan and our business, you know, we put together business plans and not only talk about like profit and loss and all this kind of stuff, but the areas of your life, your faith, fitness, your finance, you know, and all those things. And so part of mine is that I'm going to be up at 5 a.m. I'm getting in the best shape of my life, no matter what. And something's got to yeah. give. There isn't such a thing as balance. So we're on the winter break and I'm doing okay with it because there was anything to get up for. When you come to the first work day of the year, I'm like, I'm in this. I need this to take place. Here's where the opportunity came in. Hopefully somebody can learn from this. My dad had suggested it. And Laura and I had talked about it. And this is where I get where I say I appreciate her because in terms of being focused and getting things that we talked about this, but I haven't implemented it, which is having him work out with me, some form of exercise. Now, if I'm getting up at 5 a.m. to work out, give some type of prayer and gratitude and everything, and then I hit a workout, then for me to do another one in the day in between appointment with, appointments with clients, the prep and meetings and things like that that we have for the show, that's kind of a challenge because I'm getting up at five no matter what. So that means that if I've fallen asleep and woken up four or five times throughout the night because he didn't get in bed till five, I can either sacrifice the workout or I can be like, no, I'm, more, I'm, I'm gonna work out no matter what. But if I do that, then I'm tired later on. And what I did is yesterday was the very first day um, where he, he went to bed at five. We got him signed into his class later. And the melatonin gummies are like just candy right now, not really working. And so rather than do a second workout that involved any kind of push-ups or anything like that with him to ease him into it as well, what we did is we went for a walk. And um, there's a park and some hiking trails and everything near us. So we did that. And um, it wasn't a very long walk, maybe 30 minutes. And when it came time to go to bed, I don't know what the difference was, but he responded when we told him to go to bed. And it's just, and once he got in the bed, like getting up at five o'clock that morning probably helped. He fell asleep fairly quickly. Today, he got up on time, but you know, we had a little bit of a challenge with the other, with the, the, the latter class of the day, but it helped. And so the plan is to go from that to the actual weights and the push ups and the resistance and that kind of thing, which helps with his confidence, helps him physically. And then quite frankly, should wear him out so that he ends up getting some sleep at night. But then it has me in even better shape. So that's one of the solutions that that um, that we've gone to. But, you know, I had to turn around and figure out, okay, how can I make this a gift? You know, in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, we talk about this all the time. It says, you know, every seed, every adversity has a seed of equal or greater value if we look for it. And so when there's a challenge, I try to ask myself, okay, where's the where's the value? Where's the value? And the value is to try and you know, find a silver lining there or, or better yet creative. So that's where we are in regard to that. But prior to that, it's been, uh, you know, just all over the place and a, a real challenge. And there's a fine line that you have to walk between being flexible and then, you know, having no plan. Because like you said, people, we, we've been so flexible that we're just glad you're eating something. It almost doesn't matter what you eat. So that's the other thing that we're incorporating and, you know, as a couple and family, it's like, what are we consuming? What are we eating? Because his foods consist of um, 
uh, frozen pizza, uh, burgers or sandwiches and stuff, stuff like that. And, um, and he eats blueberries. He takes his vitamins and everything. But one of our goals is to improve his diet. One of my goals and the visions is um, a vision for his own life is for his independence to be um, completely changed, you know, and, and I speak, try to speak it into existence with work. So like you, that's a long winded answer to your question, which I don't know if it answered it, but hopefully it helps somebody that might have that problem out there well, as well. You know, it, it's funny. Here's the thing. I, I, uh, yeah, you know, just and just to let people know, we on our uh, on our just two dads website that we're building right now, we have we're going to put our guests information about our guests and and some of the folks that we've had uh, the pleasure of having conversation with. We're also going to be shooting uh, and 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 filming and recording some bonus material. And the reason I bring that up is that um, Susanna uh, Susanna Peace Lavelle, who uh, was a guest on our show uh, now a couple of times, and we've done some stuff with we we're going to be shooting uh, creating some some content tomorrow. We talk about this very subject because the reason I bring that up is is that I have a thirteen year old now, a boy, thirteen year old boy. So my girls never did that. Stay up till five in the morning. That was never a thing. And Blake is neurotypical. Blake doesn't have, you know, special needs issues. But now Blake now, if he could stay up all through the night, he would totally do it. Now, completely different reasons, right? He's totally into, into uh, video games. And during the break, really just gave him freedom to do his own, you know, have his own schedule. But here's the thing is, is the is the change in, to your point, boys and melatonin, right? Is the, is the change in the behavior age related and age appropriate or does this have something to do with you know with a with a diagnosis of a special needs issue right so because blake would stay up till till five in the morning if i let sometimes i'll wake up in the middle of the night and i'll be like you know at three o'clock in the morning I'm like go to bed you know turn it off yeah and, and get in bed and he closes his eyes and goes right to sleep and you know right and then he and then he sleeps till noon or, or whatever which is all good and fine yeah he starts school again uh here in the next couple of days so that's going to yeah. change but but you know is it is it a boy thing or is it a you know or is it is it an age appropriate boy thing or is it you know having to do with the you know diagnosis and and I know some of the conversation we're going to have because Susanna has a daughter we're going to talk about about girls and 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 you know how how we as parents deal with our daughters and you know teen daughters you know teen girls tend to have a lot of a lot more drama than teen boys um and you know, is this you know, is some of the stuff that you deal with the drama age appropriate and specific to that age, or does it have something to do with, you know, uh, taking in information and stimulus and, and processing it in their own yeah. unique way, right? So, anyways, that the the point is that I find it to be interesting because my teen boy would be up till five in the morning if I if I let him too, <laughs> and putting some structure in place and exercise and diet. And by the way, diet same thing. Blake's diet's just as bad as Elijah's. Blake, but him. If Blake had his way, he'd make a you know have a quesadilla every day and you know eat Chipotle for dinner every night. I mean, you know, it's really right, doesn't really have right. much of a palate. You know? <laughs> but, and and by the way, he cooks like I've encouraged him to like make meals and 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 cook. If it, again, if he had his own way, he'd he'd get up when he was hungry, he'd maybe go in the freezer, grab a scoop of ice cream, and shoot some good. um uh, whipped cream in his mouth and totally be fine yeah he would totally be okay with it well um, you know what it, so it's, you know it's, it's funny it's, 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 it's all of the above and that's the thing with when you with we all you know what i think especially these parents again not to discount anybody's situation because with some of the groups that i belong to on facebook and i see the challenges that some of the parents have there some of them they're very very serious nonetheless i think For no sure. matter how how severe or how minor a case diagnosis or issues that come along with it. I, excuse me, I still think as a rule, we unintentionally abuse the word special when it comes to special needs, because what happens is, yeah. you know, uh, we tend to, well, you wouldn't understand because this is our situation. You wouldn't understand because this is our situation. And what happens is limitations come in those right. situations. So again, that's where the balancing act comes into play, you know, because like you mentioned, is it, teen stuff every now and then you know we catch ourselves you're like you know what that there isn't really much of a difference between him and the other kids when it are you know, our, our other uh, children when it comes to those particular things you know so um it, it it's both and it does come with you know the teenage years and everything but here's the other thing too we also have to choose between what's easiest for us and what's best for them because for them to eat whatever that's easiest 
but it's not always what's you know what's best. So in terms of them sure. being introduced to different foods and stuff, that's completely up to us. And sometimes you know, because I was just yeah, the type of guy where it's like, look, you're not going to make him do whatever he does not want to do, and when he wants to do something, he's just going to lawyer you to death until you say yes. Like I'll just keep asking, I keep asking. <laughs> But no, but I'm going to keep asking. Okay, yeah. I, I understand that, but just real quick, I'm going to keep asking. And he'll just keep going until he gets what he wants. And at the yeah. same time, there's some of that that I don't want him to lose. You know, this thing intuitiveness and, you know, that right. dogged attitude and everything. And so when that happens, you're, you tend to, oh my gosh, whatever is the quickest thing. But we're at a point where we're willing to deal with some of the pushback or whatever it takes. The headache that comes from the no or the resistance, however long it lasts, is worth it when you get to the yes and the adjustment compared to the headache that comes if there's nutritional issues or something like that later on. And the truth of the matter is whatever, you know, um, you know, a child's body can take on without much uh, incident or whatever have you at a young age, and I'm not a nutritionist, but I would imagine that as you get older, those things uh, change and you have to make some kind of adjustments. But um, what I wanted to do is, you know, offer for anybody that's listening, some of the tips that, you know, um, are very common with regard to setting goals for uh, children before we transition into uh, general goal setting um, overall, and especially as to, in terms of what might apply for a parent. So one of the first things to do is, you know, Acknowledge that there's difficulty getting into a routine because of the holidays. Uh, it's difficult, you know, when coming off the winter break and then going back to school. And then share the challenges, um, you know, by acknowledging, you know, what they are and then putting the structure in place, but having the instruction um, uh, or the, uh, the, the structure based around some kind of, in, uh, of an, an incentive that is tied to what your child uh, may like or be attracted to. And if your child is verbal, simply ask them. And uh, sometimes you give them uh, either or, because that's the other thing that, that can promote some kind of growth. Look, if you do A, you get B or C. Which one do you want? And then if, they, if they're not verbal, then the other thing to do is then just based on what you know, then simply let them know, hey, if you do A, Here's what will take place. But this is what this is when we go to bed. This is when we do so and so. The other thing we've done is we have um, some visual cues. There's a place, um, I think they have more than one location out here in Los Angeles called uh, Lakeshore Learning. And uh, teachers shop there for materials. And so uh, Laura went there and got, it's for essentially sure. like, a, like a calendar. And it's a you know a little uh, whiteboard where you, you, you put your schedule on it and everything. So we've got that, some of his plaques from school from being on the honor roll and all this different stuff that says, here's when you do, you know, A, B, and C. And we've made a sort of a recommitment because again, the schedule's up there. If there's a little bit of resistance and you're tired enough, you're like, oh, all right, especially if he doesn't have to get up to school tomorrow. But when that happens, it just gets a little more difficult. So those are some of the things that can be um, um, focused on in terms of goal setting goals for a child in particular. And then of course, work hand in hand with any therapist that you may have any kind of therapy that um, um, that your child uh, may be receiving. But um, what I'd like to do is for us to now transition into the idea of goal setting for a parent. Now this might sound rev you know revolutionary because some of our listeners may be thinking, goals for me, I'm just trying to get through the day. You know, especially if there's um, a lot of challenge in raising a child, but it's been proven and I don't know what the numbers are, but there are chemicals that are even released in the brain a higher amount of them with regard to satisfaction during the course or pursuit of a goal. And it's greater than what is released during the attainment of the goal. So I say that to say that it is of immeasurable value to have something to strive for as opposed to just trying to get through the day. And with that said, you know, um, you know, let's talk about some of the things that um, that people need to do to, you know, put things, you know, um, uh, in line to achieve some of their goals. You know, what do you want the next year to even uh, look like? And um, Sean Hall, our producer in Hawaii, thank you very much. Dopamine is the word I was looking for. And that's exactly, that's exactly what I was looking for. There's more of it that's produced 
in pursuit of something than there is as a result. That's also why when some people achieve a certain amount of greatness or do something, they're kind of like, okay, what's next? And that's also why there's a difference between um, success and fulfillment. Those usually um, that have success, um, you know, fulfillment is usually tied to, um, uh, you know, a purpose. And there's people that, you know, have a certain level of success, but don't have any fulfillment in the process. So, you know, just getting through the day uh, can be a simple goal. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that too. Again, depending on what each person's situation is, if your goal is to just get through the day, and let's say maybe you haven't thought about getting through the day before, you're just going about the motion because, you know, again, most of us live a very reactionary life as opposed to planning one. We do very little things, um, you know, on purpose. I'm sure everybody's pulled into the driveway um, at at least one occasion where you pull into your driveway and there's part of you that acknowledges that you didn't come anywhere and they're getting into an accident. You know where you're going, but part of you is like, well, how did I get here? That that's sort of autopilot. We live our lives that way. So if you know, if you're if getting through the day is something that you don't even focus on, that's okay. Everybody starts at a different point, but the idea is to become intentional about something. And I think you know the first place to start is to figure out what it is that one really truly wants and get crystal clear on that, and then write it down. That sounds simple, but um, most people don't do that. And I would say that especially with what where I'm at right now with my own plans and goals. You know, I heard somebody say recently um, that one of the most difficult things you'll ever do is write down your goals and put a plan together uh, to make them take place and actually stick to that plan. It's simple, but not always necessarily easy. But I think it's someplace that, um, you know, it, not only is it you know a good place to start, but just because we're raising a child with special needs, why should we um, give up any effort to, fulfill our goals and dreams, whether we're talking about our faith, our family, our finances, you know, whatever the case might be. Well, I think, listen, I think that uh, so much to answer there on, on that. The, the concept is anybody who, who's up to something, whether it's changing your, your, your health, you know, your ex exercise regimen, your uh, eating habits, right? You're going to put more structure in place to support that effort, right? You're gonna set your alarm clock for a certain time and, and start to build in a regimen of getting up at the same time if you exercise in the morning. Often you'll go to the store and buy all the food and pre-plan your meals for the week if that's a thing for you. So, so the more that you have kind of at stake in accomplishing the goal tend to me, in, in my opinion, you you put more structure in place to support that, to support that effort. Now, I think that the challenge that a lot of people have, and to your point, you know, usually at the beginning of the year, they say gym membership skyrocket. And by February, March, gym attendance is back to normal, right? Because people get committed to an idea and then realize how hard the work is, or they're not long, they're not long-term committed, right? So I'm not really talking about those. You, you put, you put regimen and structure in place to accomplish a particular goal. But if you could expand that to the area of your life, obviously, in my opinion, you have to put in structure the thing that is going to help support your efforts in accomplishing that goal. And I mean that by saying a few things. There's a lot of books, there's a lot of conversation around you know, vision boards. People who like to look at the visual manifestation of their goals and dreams will put a vision board together. I know a lot of people that vision boards don't, there's no appeal to them for a, to have a vision board, right? Um, right. Some people want to have a written business plan or written affirmations or something that they read every morning and every night that, you know, because writing that out lay, lays out the plan for them to go to sleep with that in their mind, wake up with that in their mind and, and kick the day off, right? Other people will start out looking at, you know, what's my, to your point, the, the five or six areas of your life, you know, family, faith, fitness, finance, you know, fun. Um, all of that and you know, philanthropy, if I can add an F, another F to that. Um, mm -hmm. I know it starts with PH. Anyways, uh, the idea that um, and we have, a, we have a, a mentor in our business who has those areas mapped out all the way to age 95 for himself, right? And, and then he actually goes to the end at 95, planning to 95 or 100 years old, and then moves backwards. And so there's there's general goals you'd like to accomplish by age 90, 95, 100, 
and then walks that backwards to, you know, down to the next, you know, on an annual basis, it does it by five years and then does it on an annual basis until he gets to this year. Then he breaks it down into a quarter, a month, a week, and a day. And then there's action steps that you can take during that smaller segments, you know, to help put that regimen in place um, in order to accomplish those goals with his eye being on the long term. Sometimes it's difficult for people to think 30, 40, 50 years out. You know, they're not really thinking that far out. But if you can stretch your vision to an, include something that far out in the distance, while that can be, can you hear Siri talking to me on my other device? That's crazy. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> but it's just in the background. So like another producer in my ear, Sean, all I've got Siri telling me not to look, not to talk about. It. Anyways, the idea that you know, if you can, if you can stretch your vision to include something that's that far reaching, um, that you then walk it back and then put action steps, then you can put regiment in place today to help you accomplish those goals. Um, to your thing that you've acknowledged the, the book that, you know, the Bible of all, you know, self-development books, think and think and grow rich. Um, you know, uh, Napoleon Hill always talks about like, you can't really accomplish great goals if you don't have a plan in place and you don't take action to, you know, you, you've got to not just put that plan in place and write it down and speak it into existence, but you actually have to take action to accomplish Work. those, those goals as well. Right. And so. But I always say that people who set those goals, you know, businesses set that you set your goals differently in business than you do in your personal life. And 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 so whatever works is the most effective way for you as a parent, for you as a as an as an adult. Um, that's that's one thing that you want to look at imp, at implementing. And I'm going to say this last thing and then back to you. But, you know, with with kids who have learning disabilities or or any other special needs issues, I find that the more structure you have in place, the more chance for success they have because it's yes. incremental gains incremental wins incremental um uh you know moving towards moving towards you know again even if they're short-term goals even if they're just get through the day kind of goals they had the more structure in place the more chance for success in those in, in those conversations oh, so yeah, anyway so my, my uh, right wherever you are as a parent acknowledging that that your child worked that way and by the way even a neurotypical child i think will benefit mm -hmm. from having that kind of structure in place and, and yes. allowing for even those periods of time when you when you don't have the structure right even for allowing oh. for you know the the breaks of your schedule right mm -hmm. your date yeah. nights and or I'm, your fun nights mm -hmm. right? your days off and i'm glad you mentioned that particular training because you know I, one of a problem you're not mentioning it because uh, we're talking about a, a mentor and friend of ours by the name of uh, Jeff Levitan. And quite frankly, we've had some conversation with him about being on the show because he also happens to be a parent to two children on the autism spectrum, in addition to his philanthropy and everything. But this is hope for somebody that may have a challenge focusing out because at, you know, we're both, you know, in our mid fifties. So I, you know, I think far out think anybody can think far out uh some people don't do that you're really just day by day but thinking far out and planning far out are two totally different things so when i put my plan together i've done you know the most grandiose picture perfect thing and it's got to be this got to be that and then that's about as close as i get to implementation now i'm at a point where i acknowledge that i got to look further out but i've got these small bites along the way and the training that uh, that Jeff does is, you know, it's called, you know, living your life on purpose. And that's what I'm, we we're talking about in terms of intention. Most of us don't do, there's so much that we do on autopilot. You know, more of that is done by um, uh, instinct, if you will, than purpose. If we were to just increase our purpose and the intention with which we do almost anything and just really stop and think about it. It's almost like the development of, of you know, of, of a superpower. So those things are very, very important. But that training that he does begins with um, writing your eulogy. So we talked about some of the steps somebody might be able to do to first decide what you want. You write it on paper, um, acknowledge the power of affirmation, you speak it into existence, but then you've got action steps that you're taking each day. And each small one leads up to a big result. And those can cover areas, again, your fitness, your finance, your faith, and your family, and your philanthropy as well, which begins with a P, as you noted. <laughs> and you, all, you do have to have the ability <laughs> to be adaptable and flexible as well. And the truth of the matter is, as challenging as all of that is, if you can overcome all of that, and then the needs that your child will have, 
that your that your family will have, the responsibility to your uh, your marriage and the 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 time that that and attention that is needed for those things to nurture them all. There's something to be said for making a promise to oneself and keeping it. If you can find an excuse just to make one promise to yourself each day, because it said that that's where our confidence is built. Because if you think about it, when you make a promise to yourself and it's not kept, this is just a little bit of just a little bit of deflation that takes place. And what gets really poisonous is when there's no deflation and just ah, that's me. That's how that that's that's what I do. And because our our actions are usually in in some way in concert with our self-image and our beliefs. So those things are powerful. And so what I was getting at is that for a person like me who to plan and act far out is a challenge. You know, I've, um, with just training, I've done the uh, the obituary. And, 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 and I mean, the obituary, <laughs> listen to me. The um, eulogy. And when you think about it, just think about how, pra how practical <laughs> that is. You can live your life a certain way and just hope people say a certain thing about you. Actually, this probably does carry over into an obituary too. You hope people say certain things about you when you're gone, right? Or you can make it your business to give them a reason to do that, not leave a list, hey, please say these things, but live your life so, so that it is such that those things are said because of what you've accomplished. So then you dial back to now, you know, and then go from there. And the idea is why not plan to live a long, healthy life as opposed to hoping to do that? But then along the way, for me, what makes it work, you know, what's making it, it work at least this year, more so than ever before, as I'm paying attention to the small lights, the little things that I do each day. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's not easy, especially if I, I just talked about, you know, yeah. 5 a.m. 5 a. getting to bed and everything. So I've done well in the physical part because I didn't just start working at home. But with COVID, I canceled my gym membership. We did a home gym, you know, gym here at home. But what I'm going into those workouts with physically does not feel the same in terms of how I perform each act and exercise. So that stuff's been great, but some of the other business stuff has fallen through the cracks with the whole 5 a.m. thing because yesterday we wanted to make sure that, you know, Elijah didn't go back to sleep <laughs> because he thought he might fall asleep later yeah. on in the day. You know, but it's a constant work in progress and it's so, you know, worthwhile. When I'm talking about, you know, the only thing that's guaranteed in terms of an outcome is doing nothing and that's because then that ends up being what, what we get and again each situation is different but that's why i want to encourage people to you know uh subscribe to the channel you know give us a like but at the same time then you know chime in and write to us and let us know about things that are are, are, are you know important to you maybe there's questions that you you have things you want to um talk about or your topics you want to have discussed and then the, you know we are a village so i'm sure there's people that have things to add uh, that they've gone through, maybe they take for granted, but somebody else would be, you know, dying and loving to hear their solution and how they face that challenge. Yeah, you, you know, again, I think I think at the other day, you everybody has to find the tool that's the most effective for them to support their their goals and efforts, right? And and I I, I can think of two things just off the top that I think would be helpful for people. First of all. Um, when we set goals for ourselves, you know, it, it's funny, there's, there's, there's two, there's two schools of thought. One is you need to set a goal and you need to set a by when, right. In order to give yourself something to, to shoot for. And, and mm -hmm. that's, that there's, there's value. And I'm going to definitely talk about that in just a second. But the other thing is to look at a goal as, um, there's a school of thought and there's a school of self-development training where, you know, it's always like, you set a goal as a possibility, right? You speak possibility into the future because the reality is, you know, if you if you ask for the world, uh, but you only get China, there's still a lot of people, right? So, you know, you may not have, you know, if, if, and, and I guess they do kind of, they do kind of go hand in hand. I, I had a very effective tool that was given to me by a mentor once where it was a, it was what we called a, a it was a productivity tool. Um, and I think it made me very successful early on in my entrepreneurial career. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I may want to implement it again <laughs> because it was what I called a uh, <laughs> it was a it was a go for tool, right? Go for um, go for where where you you listed a bunch of, of of things that you wanted to measure. Now, by the way, one of the things about goals is you want to have something that's specific and measurable, right? You don't want to say I want to be happier, right? You want to 
you want to list out things that are going to, that you can measure, you can specific about. Um, yeah. With specificity, absolutely. And so, you know, you can say things like, um, oh, I want to, uh, you know, I want to have five new clients this week, right? And, and what's going to take to get five new clients? And, 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 then, and then using this tool, it was sort of like, well, what can I go to bed, you know, without really much of an effort? How many clients, new clients a week can I get without even really thinking about it, right? So maybe it's two, right? Maybe it, I know I can get two. So What's my stretch goal or what's my gopher goal, right? I, I you know, I, I'm going to, you know, I'm probably going to shoot for five this week, right? That's something specific and measurable. And you know that you've got a, if you have a five day week, it's one new client a day, right? You get through three days, you haven't gotten it, you're going to put some work in. But if you can operate at a level of productivity where you actually shoot for 10, right? You know, you can go to bed on two. You'd love to have five, but if you shoot for 10, now you're trying to get two new clients a day for five days, right? You start operating at a level of productivity that's significant high, significantly higher, you may end up with six, right? Mm -hmm. Where you could go to bed on two, happy with five, you get six because you operated at a level of 10, right? So you start operating at a higher level of activity. Again, that's what that might go for, right? You, you go for something big. And if you, and then, and then, and by the way, you measure them and you set out, you know, what did you, what did you set out to accomplish? What did you, what was your level of productivity? What did you actually accomplish? And do a little evaluation and then make the adjustment for the next week. And if you could look at that, you know, I want to make 100 phone calls if, you're, if your job involves making cold calls. I want to I wanna get 20 new prospects if your job is prospecting, right? I want to I wanna complete two new reports. So whatever it is, um, I want to have three date nights with my significant other, my spouse, right? What do you have to put in place that's specific and measurable? And how can you level up your productivity in order to accomplish a higher goal, shoot for the world, get China. That's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of people. So that's kind of the, that's, that's one thing. Knowing that, of course, some people get caught up in this goal setting conversation where, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds by next Friday, right? Where, right. you know, that's may not be an achievable goal, right? And, it, and if they, if they don't hit it, they go into, you know, into, you know, into pullback mode. They go into, I failed. I didn't hit that goal. And so I right. like to, you know, so again, it's sort of, you've got to be a bit two handed at it where you'd love to set your goal and set productivity, but also know that setting a goal of losing 20 pounds and, you know, by next Friday, which may be impossible for some people or for a lot of people, um, that you don't set it as a, necessarily as a goal that you that you'll fail at, but as a possibility. And if you can operate at a level of productivity that has you accomplish that as a possibility, well, then if you only get twelve pounds, that's a win. A, it's still right. a win, right? Because twenty as a possibility, as opposed to twenty as a goal, right? You operate right. at a level of productivity that gets you there. But in, so if you get to twelve, you know that's a win, and that should be celebrated, right? You shoot for three night, date nights, you get two really good quality date nights in with your spouse or significant other, mm -hmm. that's something to be, you know, uh, to be cherished and honored and acknowledged and, you know, celebrated as a win. And so I think that whatever's going to work for people to implement a, a structure to help them support their goals, their goal setting, whether it's a vision board or writing it down or an action plan or a productivity sheet, somebody posted, you know, Sean posted smart goals. Like there's a whole there's a whole bunch of, of things that people can 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 utilize. You have to find the one that helps you get the results that you're trying to accomplish. And your children see that. And if you implement those kinds of things for your for your children, by the way, just like language, we have to know what works for our children as well to help them accomplish their goals. And our special needs children may have learning differences that, you know, what may work for you may not work for your child. And so you have to have some flexibility, find the thing that works for them, that put that, that implements, put some structure in place to have them accomplish their goals, celebrate those wins as well, have, help, help them to build some regiment of, of celebrating gains, productivity, and, and wins. And I think that, you know, the beginning of the year is always good because we've taken two weeks off at the end of the year to celebrate the holidays and kind of refresh and reflect on the year that's passed and look at this year as a new long-term goal for, our, for ourselves a year of activity that we'd love to accomplish by the end of the year, step it back by the quarter, by the month, by the week, by the day, and put it in place. So I think, you know, again, it was a mouthful to say here at the end of the show, but to say, you know, goal setting is a significant thing. And if you're, if you're setting out to accomplish something, 
as opposed to just getting through the day. Uh, and not that there's anything wrong with getting through the day. Sometimes getting through the day is an, is an okay goal that should be <laughs> should be uh, so celebrated as well, right? Because right, in right. a time of global pandemic, sometimes getting through the day is 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 a, is a win for some people, and that's okay. People who deal with depression and anxiety, sometimes but getting through then, the day is a win, and that should be acknowledged and celebrated. Yeah. Oh, definitely. But but even then, we should make it our intention, like as opposed to you begin the day. And then you have no review of it till the end of the day. And it's like, whew, got through that. You know, now if it has to be that because it is in fact that bad, so be it. But let that be where you are. Don't let that be where you stay. Let it go from that to, okay, I woke up, I went to sleep, and I got the blessing of seeing another day. So I quote unquote, got through the day. That's what getting through the day looks like. What might it look like if I redefine what it means to, get through the day, you know, whatever the case might be. The other thing that I thought of as you were mentioning that is that, you know, and we know this as we talk about personal development uh, in our business and everything too, which is that, you know, we have to accept discomfort. I uh, need to get comfortable being uncomfortable, um, you know, with no, you know, without pressure, you, you don't have a diamond. You, without resistance, you're not gonna get any muscles. And what happens is as a caretaker for someone with special needs, you got hots for comfort. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? You're like, you're looking for some comfort. You're like, what? Discomfort? No, I can't deal with that. But the sooner we can get used to discomfort, especially if it is for a temporary period of time, and if it is in exchange for something that is greater than that which we had at the beginning of the quote unquote journey, trial, or test, then that's a different story. Then it's worthwhile. And all and you don't and you won't see that unless you decide exactly what it is you want and have the end result in mind. So begin to ask yourself, okay, what would it look like if, how will it feel when I, and make sure right. that answer is, as you said, with some form of specificity, I'd like to make a lot of money. Okay. What does it mean to have more money at the end of the month than bills? What does it mean to be making a certain amount of dollars that may increase, but is above what you need and doesn't change no matter what you do to get to a shot if you're so lucky where you put in some time and yeah. your actions continue to pay you dividends after the fact what does that number look like one you find out that you're precisely where you might want to be instead of some generality but then the other thing is you might surprise yourself and find out that it doesn't take as many dollars as you might think and then the question you have to ask yourself is once you've done it should that happen would that be worth it? What would that look like, taste like, feel like, smell like? Close your eyes and actually feel it and have that happen. And on that note, um, yeah, we're at that at that point. The hour has <laughs> ran by. It's because we're at that moment, right? I'm like, oh my god, look at the clock. We're already at that time, right? The yes, hour yes, goes yes. by so fast. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah, it has. And again, we can talk about this kind of subject and with you know and give resources and stuff. We can talk about this for for hours. We talk about this a lot. But I think again, goal setting at the beginning of the year is always a good thing for people to do, for people to review um, and set some some parameters to to move forward. So on, on yes. that, we will wrap up our our hour here. Thank you everybody for for participating. Thank you for the comments. We got some great comments today. Some great participation from some folks. Um, Robert Moorhead, as always, such a such a huge support to our effort here. Susanna. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for contributing. And even my daughter Joe was on earlier today, and 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 Rose. We've got a few folks that uh, thank you all for participating, and for those who are listening, uh, we appreciate you. Um, in this uh, coming out of this year of some 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 crazy times where folks are suffering from, whether it's uh, being uh, locked in, indoors for an extended period of time, <laughs> they're not used to it, or struggling with uh, the effects of of COVID and global pandemic, or losing a job. And, all of the things that we've been dealing with, uh, social unrest and, and uh, you know, the world changing, uh, really my my end of the hour always, always involves reminding people that love and empathy um, above everything. Love trumps hate always. Uh, love and empathy for your fellow man is, uh, is, what, is what makes the world go around. So I love you all. Thank you, Sean, as always. I love doing this with you. I love having this conversation with you. Sean Hall, who, who supports our efforts on a, on a regular basis on so many, many fronts. Sean, we love you. It's in, out, of, out of Hawaii. Thank you, buddy. As we sign off and say goodbye, Sean, you want to say some parting yes. words before we go? 
I will close this out. Yes, thank you so very much. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Tuznava Tunar, who tuned in from Canada, who's one of our previous guests and uh, a great contributor. Um, I want to, again, just as you did, thank Robert Moorhead as well. And I want to also stress that, you know, regardless of um, what is taking place, especially in this country right now, there is a, a, a deep-seated bunch of division at the same time that there is some unity, but there's unity among factions. You got this group united on this side, that group united on that side. And um, we acknowledge today, too, that we were going to have a challenge focusing on this and our mission at hand and not being distracted by that but it it can't go without being mentioned that there's a lot of that taking place so with that division then ups the need for our responsibility to unite people and when i say our i'm talking about the village i'm not talking about brian and i i'm talking about every person within the sound of my voice no matter when and where you are listening to this um you know i want to thank our listeners in, uh, in, the, in the virgin islands on wsdx I want to, of course, thank my amazing wife, Laura, and my mom, Jan. I would be nothing without them. And I also want to let you guys know we're going to be sharing details about it. Um, you know, we have an event that is coming up. It'll be online, and it's January uh, 20th, um, where we're going to be talking about uh, financial concepts and things like that. So what we're talking about, again, goals and dreams and, and putting you on a path to, to making some of those those things come true. We want to make sure that we're sharing that with as many people and we want to add as much value as we possibly can. So please feel free to subscribe to our page on YouTube, uh, like, and write to us. You can reach us at um, uh, wearejusttwodads at gmail.com because what we want to do is we don't want to just take up time. We want to add value and we'll come up with stuff that we think most of you will relate to because of our experiences. But we want to make sure that those things are added to because of your experience. Let us know. Um, so with that said, um, thank you very much, love and a very happy new year. Yes. Happy new year, everybody. And, uh, and Robert, I'm wearing jeans. So, uh, you're right. Not shorts, but love you all. Happy new year. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.